University Augusta Road in the city of Garden City, Georgia. We thank God for the ministerial staff here, Pastor Harold Edwards, the senior pastor, Minister Emmanuel Gray, Minister Victor Logan, Minister Arnold Matthews. We thank God for the board of deacons, the deaconesses, and to all the department of ministries here at Philon. We give God glory, amen, for all of his goodness and kindness to us. Now we're going into our time of praise and worship, and we want you to get with us wherever you are watching this service by way of Facebook Live or YouTube. We want you to praise the Lord right where you are. Amen. Tell the Lord how much you love Him, how much you glorify Him, how much you thank Him, how much you adore Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! It could have been the other way, but God has allowed our golden moments to roll on just a little while longer. And for that, we give God glory and we give Him praise. Hallelujah!
good. And we need the word from the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't live without the word. Hallelujah. Man, amen, cannot live without the bread of life. I need thee. Yeah.
going to praise you with everything we got because we may not get the opportunity on tomorrow. We're going to love you like we've never loved you before today because tomorrow ain't promised us. We are going to do your will and your business today, Lord to God, because tomorrow just might be too late. So we thank you, Lord, for me. Magnify you again. Always. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we praise you. We thank you for this first Sunday in the month of November, the first day, Lord God, that you allowed us to assemble here. And not only that, Lord God, but all of us that, that are here that today, you have saw fit through your grace to make us a part of this experience. Hallelujah. And for whatever reason you've chosen, we thank you for it. So we're going to take the opportunity, my Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, to use this opportunity to magnify you and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through the power of your Holy Spirit. We are going to witness like we've never witnessed it. We are going to pray like we've never prayed before. We are going to study your word like we've never studied before. And we are going to walk, glory to God, like we've never walked before. So we thank you. Now, Lord, as we just move just a little longer in this worship hour, grant us the grace in your anointing from the hearts and minds of these, your people. Prepare them for what must be said. What is the word of God? And me, your servant, don't forget about it. Hallelujah. I am the weakest of the weak. But when your spirit comes upon me, when you shower your grace and your anointing, I am the strongest of the strong because then and only then that I'm operating in the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I thank you. Hallelujah. Now, Lord. Now, Lord. Bless that free and deliver. Everywhere, everywhere this morning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Break yokes and destroy the bond that any man, enemy might have placed upon it in the way of some of your children. Only you can do it. So we ask you this morning that you will do it. Hallelujah. That you might get the praise. That you might get the glory. Always for all that you've done. And we ask these things as only we can. Jesus Christ, who is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. We thank God this morning, Sister Johnson, because I know some people have been in the midst of a storm on last week, Elder, and God has showed himself strong, glory to God, and that's the God we serve, and, I, and I'm so grateful that's the God that saved me 26 years ago when I was in the midst, glory to God. I mean, I was in the valley of valleys when it came to my sin, and God reached down when, when I didn't think that, that anybody, glory to God, had the, the will or the might to be able to reach down and to lift me up. God showed me that he's God, and he's God alone, glory to God, and he did it, Jamal, for me. And I thank God for what he has done for you all this week. What he has done for you all in your lives. Give God the praise. Give God the glory. Hallelujah. Because he's worthy. Of all that he has done in our lives. So glad to be back at Fairlawn Baptist Church. Glory to God to minister this morning. And by way of those that are viewing in uh, Facebook this morning, we thank God for each and every one of you, as I always encourage you in the Lord, uh, take advantage of the day that every day that God gives you, Tasha, because we, we really don't know uh, whether it's going to be our last. I um, uh, helped to funeralize my cousin's wife yesterday, Sister Linda Anthony. She was 50, well, would have been 50 years old two days prior to being called home. And, it's, and death is just everywhere, everywhere. And the reality is we don't know where the next place is going to rear its head. But the reality is if we are, uh, have made our peace, uh, peace through Jesus Christ's blood on the cross with God, we don't have to worry when death comes. We don't have to worry when trials come. Glory to God. We can rest in the comfort of the Lord. So be encouraged this day. Make sure that you got all your business done. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. This morning we um, are going to venture to the uh, book of Philippians, the fourth chapter for our scripture text, Philippians 4. And we are going to begin reading at the fourth verse, Philippians 4.4. 4. For those who are able to stand when, as you find the word of God this morning, we ask that you would 
Stand with us, Brother Arbor, and those who are uh, visiting by way of Facebook, if you feel like resting uh, from your feet at home, uh, rest from your feet with us. Amen? Amen. Philippians 4.4. 4. <clears throat> Paul's letter to the church at Philippi. Listen to what he says beginning at that fourth verse. He says what? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say what? Rejoice. Rejoice. Hallelujah. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God. Amen. And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But listen at what he says from this point on. He said, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatever is of a good report, he says, think on these things. Hallelujah. You do these things, he says. What the, the 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 peace of God will be with you. Now the, these things are things that are things of righteousness. Glory to God. So he said, "What think on these things?" When we look at the world today, back in 1970, some of y'all old enough to remember. I know I am, and I, Tasha might not be, and Jamal. But the Temptations came out with a song in 1970. It was a singles hit. And the, the title to the song, Lena, was Ball of Confusion. You remember that, Bella? Ball of Confusion. And, and a few lyrics, let me see if I recall a few lyrics from my heart drive. You know, I always tell y'all, you, you may not have heard these songs for 99,000 years, but, but somehow or another, whenever glory to God, they start to begin to be played. And the words is automatic, they start to flow from your mouth. I said, you can't ever try to get you to learn two songs in two years in the choir. And we struggle with two songs. And, and then we got songs from 50 years ago, glory to God, that when they come up, we just, they just automatically start flowing from our lips. Somebody said, because they, they registered on our hard drive. Hallelujah. It said, fear in the air. Tension everywhere. Unemployment. Rising fast, the Beatles' new record, a gas. And the only safe place to live is on an Indian reservation. And the band played on. Unemployment, tension, fear. Kind of sounds like almost prophetic to the time that we're living in. We need to take heed. The question is, how do we take heed in times like these? It's the same way we take heed. We should take heed all the time, and that is in righteousness. Righteousness is so important to us as believers this morning, and God wants to just share with us the reality of righteousness. Because even as believers, let me tell you something, we still live in this old house, right? And this old house sometimes, what well, it doesn't do what God wants it to do. Why is that? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Romans, it cannot. He said the flesh, what, is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. That's why we got to get, what, a new body. But God has given us the power through the Holy Spirit that we are able to, what, keep our flesh under. Amen? So we thank God for that. But if we're not careful, we could become like those that are of the world and we could be tempted in times of persecution and in times of trouble to do what? Forsake the righteousness that God expects of us. Don't you ever let yourself to be tempted to forsake righteousness. 
You always walk in righteousness. You always abide in righteousness because righteousness is going to be the factor or the means by which we are going to be able to make it through because righteousness gives us great promises from God. Amen? Amen. Examination of the heartbeat of our nation this morning will find a nation that is experiencing a degree of, of unrest like never before. Yes. Experiencing the lack of compassion of life and certain sectors of our community, experiencing economic, social, and racial division that has not been seen so openly before. Yes. And on top of all of that, we're facing an election on Tuesday for the highest political office in our land. Amen. Some declare it is the most important election in our nation's history. If we're going to remain the democratic republic that we have been since our inception as a nation and the most important election I want y'all to hear me good if we are going to continue to maintain the democracy of freedom that we have become accustomed to and appreciate the real challenge that we must face both as citizens hallelujah and as children of God now, 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 this is the dichotomy. You know, sometimes we think that, well, well, well we're just facing things as, as human beings. No, there is a difference between facing them, glory to God, as citizens of this world, and then there is, hallelujah, what we are going to do as the children of God. And sometimes we find ourselves in a dilemma, wrestling and tussling, glory to God. But the reality is it ought not be a wrestle or a tussle because no matter what, first and foremost, we must always present ourselves as who we are, and that is as children of the Most High God. So the great question for the church this morning, that is for believers this morning, is how we're going to proceed making the decisions how it is we are going to go forward, how we are going to conduct ourselves and what it is to what is going to be the barometer glory to God by which we gauge our lives. You see there has to be a barometer, there has to be a standard of how we gauge our life. You see, we're not who we used to be. The Bible says what? We, we, we've been born again. We've become what? New creatures, glory to God, in Christ Jesus. Now, when we were unsaved, we realized that the standard or the barometer that we gauged our lives by were the things of the world. Not only were we in the world, we were of the world. But the Bible has declared now, though we're in the world, we're not of the world. So the standard that we have as children of God is no longer the standard that we used to operate by. Because even though we are in it, we are not of it. Right? We're citizens of heaven, the Bible says. That's why Paul tells us in Colossians that we ought to what? Set our affections on things that are above where Christ sits at the right hand of God. We're just pilgrims and strangers and travelers. Our home is in heaven. We're going there one day. But in the meantime, while we're in this foreign land, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God expects us to do his holy and righteous will. What is to be the barometer of how we gauge our lives as we how we are going to act. It's simple. For the Christian, that is. And it doesn't matter whether you're young or old, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're black or white, we must always conduct ourselves as Christians in righteousness. Hallelujah. Because we all get tempted sometimes, whether we're in the grocery store, whether we're in Walmart, whether we were in, in, in Home Depot, you know, sometimes we're confronted with, with, with tests where we, we, we are looked upon as if we're not there, we're looked upon, glory to God, as if we don't exist, we're looked upon as if we don't matter, and if we're not careful, you know, sometimes that flesh wants to rise up in us, let's be honest about it, and want us to do what, get away from the righteous standard that God has called us to, and we must be careful. Because it's just a temptation of the flesh. Don't let me tell you. I'm not telling you, Pastor, passes all the tests that is sent his way. I'm not saying that at all because no man is perfect. But what I'm trying to tell you, that we must gird ourselves, hallelujah, in the things of God so that when these times come, yes. we'll be able to maintain and hold on to that virtue of righteousness. 
because it's so important. You say, Pastor, what's important about it? You see, what the enemy does, he always wants to try to infringe on our integrity as children of God. Because once we lose our integrity as children of God, our work becomes what? Ineffective in this life. And when we lose our integrity and when our work becomes ineffective, we'll be better off if God calls us home because we are not accumulating anything. It's going to be by the standard of righteousness and your integrity that is going to make you effective in this life. Amen. I don't care about anything else. The world looks at us. They, are, they hold us up to a standard that they expect us to uh, buy and buy. Amen. Our actions are going to make a difference. Please the one that we're going to have to one day give an account to. Then our actions are going to have to be built upon the standard of righteousness. Righteousness will always be the standard. You and I as children of God. Because only righteousness has the power to overcome unrighteousness. Y'all hear what I just said? Only righteousness has the power to overcome unrighteousness, has the power to overcome injustice, and has the power to one day hold all unrighteousness to accountability. It will just wait on the Lord. But sometimes we just can't wait on the Lord. Sometimes we want to handle that thing ourselves. Lord, I know you said you're going to take care of it, but Lord, I know you're busy and I'll just take care of this matter right now. And then when we find out, when we put matters in our hand and not trust God for them, every time we make a mess of it, do the wrong thing and say the wrong thing and then we got to go back and humble ourselves and we'll just do what God says. Let's walk in righteousness. That's why Jesus died to make us righteous. That's why the one who knew no sin became sin for us that we might become what? The righteousness of God in him. Righteousness, the only means whereby all the ungodliness that comes after us can be master. You see, sometimes we think victory is because I beat the little fella down. We think victory is because I know that I won that conversation in the word. We think that victory is when we feel like we've gotten the best in this thing. Let me tell you, victory, glory to God, is not spelled that way in God's kingdom. Victory in God's kingdom means sometimes you just got to keep your mouth shut. In God's kingdom, it means that you have to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. In God's kingdom, it means you have to trust in God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Yeah. All your ways acknowledge him, he'll direct your path. But sometimes we want to trailblaze ourselves. No, let God lead you. Yeah. One thing about the Holy Ghost, he'll never lead you. He cannot lead you in the path of unrighteousness. He don't know that Jesus, that's what David said, what, in the 23rd? He leadeth me in the path of what? Righteousness for his what? Name say, if God's going to get the glory, righteousness has to be. Hallelujah! Strengthen the pillar of our life that when people see us, hallelujah, they'll say that that's a righteous woman, that's a righteous man, that's a child of God, truly born again, filled with the Spirit of God. They just exude what? Righteousness, hallelujah. But righteousness will carry you a lot further than your bank account. Righteousness is going to gain more for you in the end, glory to God, than anything that you could have in this life. Question for some, where do we get it? It comes from the word of God. The principles that we need for this righteousness is found where all the other principles of virtue are found in the believer's life, in the word of God, glory to God. The principle that causes us to be seen for who we truly are, causes us to be able to make a difference in this life, causes us to be able to overcome adversity and causes us to manifest in our lives, glory to God, that we are more than conquerors through him that first loved us. It is in the word of God that these principles are found. And when we seek them 
and heed to them and walk in that righteousness, then everything is going to be all right. Because only righteousness is able, hallelujah, to pave the way for us that we're able to see. Because righteousness is that lamp unto our feet and that light unto our path. And if we are going to be able to walk where God wants us to walk and walk in a way that is pleasing unto God, we are going to have to allow ourselves through the word of God to be built upon that word where righteousness becomes the virtue that drives us. Hallelujah. You see, while Jesus was on the earth, the only thing that the enemy tried to do was try to get him to compromise on God. Knowing that he was God, glory to God. But then what? He laid aside his glory that he might come to save us. But the reality was, it, it was all about his integrity. Hallelujah. Think about it. If Jesus could sin and he could not sin, people say, well, Pastor, he, he, well, he couldn't sin. Well, what was the purpose of it? Well, the Bible said, God cannot sin. God is not subject to anything. Jesus said, it's not he can't sin. When the devil approached Jesus, remember, Jesus said, come let us go, the prince of this world coming, and he ain't got nothing in me. In other words, this body that I'm in, it ain't got no weakness. But he has everything in these flesh. And that's why God has given us principle and guidance in order to do what we need to do in order to be able to uh, please God. It must always be righteousness, church, in the life of the believer. Righteousness has to be the area where we we'll always default to, no matter what the circumstance. I don't care how they treat us. I don't care how they, they behave. We have to always be able to keep ourselves subject under the mighty hand of God, the Holy Spirit, so that our lives will default back to righteousness, because righteousness is going to be the means. See, it many times. We open our mouth, it's going to get us in trouble in an unrighteous way. Jesus wasn't bashful about speaking the truth. We can speak the truth, but when we allow the flesh glory to God and unrighteousness to make decisions for us, then we are going to be in trouble. Because when we default back to righteousness, where we go will always be the right place to go. What, what we say out of our mouths will always be the right thing to come out of our mouths. Hallelujah. What we uh, uh, choose and how we choose to conduct ourselves will always be in a godly way. The present decision that we have to make sometimes, we'll always make the right decision when we let righteousness lead us. How we raise our children will always be in the right way because we're using righteousness as our guide. And how we treat our neighbors will always Always be the best way because righteousness will be the means and our guide by which we live our life. And even when it comes on Tuesday, hear me out. The choosing, hallelujah. Governmental leaders, righteousness must be, hallelujah, the means by which we make our decisions. Paul in our text to all believers encourages us. He said what in verse 4? Rejoice in the Lord always. That is, the Lord is strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We ought to always rest in the comfort and the joy of the Lord. No matter what's going on around us, there's nothing bigger than the joy of the Lord. And if we rejoice in the Lord always, if we are filled with the joy of the Lord always, what can come to make our day a bad day? Amen. Amen. Nothing. Nothing. But because we are flesh and blood and flesh that has been and, and infringed upon, we have to make sure that we gird ourselves and bind ourselves around the word of God so we can keep that flesh from uh, popping up because there comes bad reports sometimes. The only thing that's going to hold you together, hallelujah, is who you are in the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, rejoice always in the Lord. And he tells us that we're not to be overly concerned about anything. You know, sometimes we, 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 we can't lay our head on the pillow at night and can't go to sleep already because we are tossing to and fro about the things of this world. Somebody said, if you're going to stay up all night, God already done said, he don't sleep, glory to God. Why in the Lord are you going to stay up all night long? If you're trusting in God, hallelujah, God's out, you go to sleep. Let God handle it. Let God handle it. Don't be overly concerned about anything but by prayer. Through prayer and supplication, 
what? With thanksgiving, make your request known unto God. In other words, you go to God. It's a request. You know what it says? And in an order, we don't tell God what to do. We go to God in humility as the children of God. We take requests to God. God, Father, I got a report from the doctor that wasn't so good. I got a report from my job that wasn't so good. I got a report that my children not doing what you want them to do. And Father, I humble myself under the mighty hands of yours. And this is what I ask glory to God in Jesus' name. Amen. Make your requests known unto God. For the Bible says God is always open. Hallelujah. Until our prayers. His eyes are always over the righteous and his ears are always open unto our prayers. Go to God and pray. Hallelujah. And leave it there. Because at any time we seek God's will and heed God's will, our lives will always be on the paths of righteousness that will cause us to prosper. You'll always prosper when you're walking in righteousness. You may not always understand, hallelujah, but you'll always prosper. And your life will always be a life, hallelujah, that makes the right decisions that will bring glory to God. God's instructions from the pen of the apostle Paul that compels us to lay hold on whatever is honest, he says, just, pure, lovely, and of a good report. These virtues of righteousness, he said, grab a hold of them and don't let it go. Hallelujah. Why? Because these are the things of value that are going to make a difference in our walks as children of God. Value that will always give us comfort, Monica. Hallelujah. No matter what comes to pass. And knowing that when we do what God says we ought to do because of righteousness, that God will always be pleased with our lives. And knowing through knowledge that whatever we do that he tells us will be pleasing in his sight. Knowing through knowledge that this righteousness will always be able to conquer over unrighteousness. Yes. Righteousness through Jesus Christ. Yes. That in spite of circumstances yes. brings the peace of God Amen. that surpasses all understanding. All understanding. Righteousness in our lives this morning. Yeah. That is holding on to God's word. That declares. Revenge is mine, said the Lord. I will repay. You see, if we don't hold on to God's word, then we'll find ourselves fighting our own battles. Oh, yes. Righteousness that no matter what. The report of unrighteousness is when it comes does not, cannot, and will not infringe on the promises of the blessedness of glory that God has promised us. Amen. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying you're going to go through some stuff in this life. Yes. Hallelujah. But you just hold on to what's right. Hold on. And what we go through will mimic in comparison to the glory that shall be revealed in us. Righteousness, hallelujah, that no matter who is elected Amen. or re-elected on November the 3rd as the president of this nation will keep us anchored in the one who is truly in control. Amen. Too often we worry about this and we worry about that. But righteousness will keep us anchored in Christ. Yes. Righteousness in Jesus that assures us a life. That will be filled with blessedness of eternal hope. Hope that impresses the knowledge of God upon our hearts. That reaffirms that God is sovereign. That God is in control. That God is and will forever sit on the throne with all power in his hand and because he has all power in his hand, I don't have to worry and you don't have to worry. Right. November 
the third will come and go. And God will still be God. Unchangeable and unmovable. So let us not as believers get caught up in unrighteousness. Let us rest in the comfort and the power that the righteousness of God affords us. So that no matter what it is that we're going through, hallelujah, we can hold our heads up high and we can walk in victory because righteousness will see us through. Yes. In this present hour. In order for us to have civility, it is important, Lena, and it does matter who sits behind the desk in the Oval Office. Let me say that again. Yes, in this present hour, in order for us to have civility, it does matter who sits behind the desk in the Oval Office in the highest position of authority in this land. Hallelujah. But in the end, hallelujah, all that is going to matter is who it is that sits on the throne in heaven. Hallelujah. With all power in his hands. Because he's the one that's sovereign, that sets up leaders and take down leaders. And it is he that we must put our trust in no matter what. Hallelujah. And stand firm as children of God. He is the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. Don't be tempted to compromise on righteousness because righteousness is the virtue that sets us apart as children of God. On Tuesday, do us right. Peace of God will be with you. Amen. Amen. amen, amen, and amen. Now stand up. Might be somebody who, glory to God, uh, needs salvation today. Somebody who's struggling with a decision to make. Who is a child of God? The answer is simple. Do what's right. Do what you know according to the word of God to be right. And once you do that, then God's peace will come in flowing like a river. If you're out there today in Facebook land and you have lost and you need salvation, you can come to the cross right now and Jesus staying behind. Lay all yourself on him. Coming to the cross saying, Lord, I need you, I need you, I need you. I'm lost. Hallelujah. And I need the salvation that only you can give. He said in his word as an ambassador of Christ, he said, tell them to profess with their mouth that I'm Lord. In other words, to acknowledge me as the only one who's Lord and to believe in their heart that I died for their sin and that I have risen from the dead and that I sit on the right hand of God. Tell them that. If you do that today, the Bible says, you'll be saved. It ain't hard. God has done all the hard work. Jesus has done it all. All we have to do is accept and receive God's offer of grace. That our names might be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That we will forevermore live for the glory of God, with God, when the Lord returns for His church. If you're here today, if you're there, praise for glad today, needing salvation. This is your power. This is your time. Hallelujah. Come to Jesus while you still have time. He's standing with open arms. Hallelujah. He said, in no way anyone that comes to him will he cast away. Hallelujah. The harvest is plentiful. The labor is complete. Come to Jesus while it is today. And let the Lord wash you in his precious blood. Amen. Amen. Children of God will go forth and take heed to what it is that God has said. 
Be not tempted to allow yourself to be drawn into unrighteousness. For unrighteousness will always be unpleasing to God. When we stand for righteousness and in righteousness, God will always be pleased with us. Be encouraged in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen.